bigoted people are violent, right? And it's not reducing at any <laughs> appreciable rate anytime soon. And the, the fixation that bigots have on, you know, people's personal parts is scary, right? Disgusting and so on. Dwellers, welcome to Dwell On It, a series where I, Taylor, answer your questions about my lived experience as a trans woman. If you're new to the channel, what that is is pretty much the premise of things right there, where you and many other people, of course, will go ahead and send questions to me by comments or by DMs. I put them on note cards and throw them in a grab bag, draw them out randomly, and make an episode out of it. So if you'd like to, of course, participate with that, please make sure to include questions of your own, as I've mentioned, in comments, in DMs. If you enjoy the content, please make sure to hit like and of course please make sure to subscribe if you have not subscribed yet and that's also to the people who have been following the channel and still haven't hit the subscribe button yet a little awkward by now <laughs> so definitely please make sure to like share subscribe the questions of course too don't always need to be trans related because part of dwell on it is also just about humanizing the experience of course i want to help to be uh, educational you know and sometimes entertaining when the time is right inspirational for those who need it and sometimes if you're just dinky curious if I prefer cats or dogs, right? Please feel free to ask. Follow the playlist as well too. There's chapters in all the episodes. <laughs> I do the best that I can to make sure that all the questions are listed to, you know, see the other questions that have been answered earlier too. I like to include every episode ever since I've discovered a, uh, its value, a visual description. And so with that, I am in my living room, which I also double as my gym and my office, of course, too. Sometimes my bedroom too, I guess, depending on the time of day. The past few days I've been up at 1.30 in the morning so a quick cat nap on the couch ends up being useful once in a while too. Nonetheless though, uh, it's beige walls midday with the blinds closed so there's a little bit of light behind me. We can see a air conditioner on the wall which is turned off. There's a mirror on the wall as well which is not getting looked in. I've got three pieces of cardio equipment behind me which is my elliptical, my recumbent bike and my treadmill. Myself personally, I'm feeling a bit of a hot mess right now because this is another muggy-ish day but I don't want to fight against the air conditioner so I'm going through it. I've got my long blonde hair which is a uh, past armpit length it's straightened and it's swept over the left side of my face i've got my three dermal piercings as always underneath my right eye in a small medium large fashion going outwards towards a cluster earring on the top of my right ear I have two stud piercings and a nose piercing as well, the same chain that I never take off all the time. I am wearing a gray and black and white well, and branded pink um, hoodie and underneath is a gray t-shirt and you can see just the outline of a white sports bra underneath as well if we want to get that detailed about things. My makeup palette is based on blue and purple again. I've been uh, running with a, uh, a personal challenge lately. I was told a small while ago that nobody looks good wearing gray and I've embraced that since and challenge accepted. I had nails done recently for people who've been following along with new new designs and so as we can see there's gray all over the place with a light gray dark gray matte with chrome tips and uh, just a little bit of glimmer on the uh, the ring and pinky finger or pardon me the ring and pointer fingers that's pretty much what I'm working with with a visual description right now I'm a white uh, six foot one trans woman I live in Winnipeg Manitoba which is treaty one territory as I mentioned at the top my name is Taylor I use she her pronouns and I think we can get right into this episode right now did HRT make your body experience any drastic changes that may not be obvious otherwise? Uh, yeah, <laughs> right at the beginning of my intro, how I mentioned I'm feeling muggy. The biggest thing that I've noticed that, you know, you wouldn't see in pictures, won't well, mind you, unless you catch me looking like a hot mess like right now. I feel very strongly that my sensitivity to temperature is way more pronounced than, uh, than it was before, which wouldn't be as overt as other changes that would come along with HRT. I've known that sensitivity to temperature would be different. I've always been a furnace, <laughs> like with no questions asked in a past life. And then sometimes I turn from a furnace now to a deep freeze, which is something that's like even to this day, and I, I, I embrace that it's just part of my life now. I, I almost never really noticed cold before, and when I would just be hot, I was just hot because I was already 
expecting that. But now it is so sudden and so immediate and so blatant and so unforgiving. It's probably the best way that I could put it. I said to a friend earlier where experiencing any sort of humidity now, and this is going to date me really well, like I've acknowledged before, I'm 41, so the generation who might understand where I'm going with this, but any sort of humidity is like automatic Chris Farley or Ric Flair level hot mess. <laughs> if you know, you know, I think you, you know where I'm going with that, but it's just that is something that you, you wouldn't know otherwise unless you're like, yeah, yeah, temperature is a thing. <laughs> um, that to me is is probably one of the most pronounced things that I've um, I've noticed when it comes to HRT. When I started hormone replacement therapy, one of the first things that really stood out to me, and this just comes to memory because I had a, a pre-op a couple days ago and the question was brought up, so I may as well bring it up again. One of the medications that I was taking, one of its side effects is just going to you know go pee more frequently. That was very, very evident. Like, wow, I may as well have been taking my coffee and just pouring it straight into the toilet. I was I was going pee a lot until, you know, your body kind of like, you know, it's, it's on its new path and whatever. I don't know if you want to call those changes or events or recognitions or anything like that, but uh, I think those would be ones that, you know, you wouldn't be able to see by, you know, like looking at transition timeline pictures or videos or, you know, not seeing someone in a small while and seeing like, wow, you look very not the same as I remember the last time I saw you type of stuff. So those I think would be the ones that stand out the most to me from, from my own experience. Um, that was awesome. I love that question. Do you have any scars that have cool stories? I'm not cool enough to have cool stories for scars, but I've got some scars that are unique. Uh, well, I'd like to think they're unique. <laughs> not like I flaunt them as like, oh, look what I got, but something that, you know, I don't know if anyone else has ever experienced anything kind of like it. I've got my fair share of, um, what type of, like, I don't know what type of scar they would be called, but, you know, to have, like, patches of skin <laughs> relocated. <laughs> um, from playing sports, for example, like, I definitely have a uh, an area on my elbow from just constantly diving or whatever, and uh, same thing with... Um, my right knee, I believe it is, has gotten cuffed up a little bit too. But otherwise, in terms of some other types of scars, I don't know if this can get seen. I'll do what I can. Oh, I can see it. Okay, so that right there, those are from a bow saw. <laughs> when I was 10 years old, I was trying to work on building a tree fort. In, I think I was 10 whatever anyway right but i was trying to work on building a tree fort with some friends of mine where where i used to camp and you know back in the day that was a time when you were allowed to use you know tools and sharp objects without being hyper policed by anyone a generation above you but i digress so i'm out in the back you know and you know we've got our tools and everything like that and i had a bow saw clearly hence the story and as i was cutting um whatever tree it was i ended up uh, getting a knot in the tree and the uh, the saw bounced off of it and straight over my thumb you know and I, I put the saw down and I was like, guys I'll be back and went back to uh, you know where where our site was and started getting it cleaned up I'm pretty sure I saw the bone like I never got stitches or anything for it pretty sure I saw the bone which was getting downplayed because I thought it was kind of neat because it was white I don't know any of the things that would be underneath the skin that are white <laughs> but I was like oh cool uh, you know and throw a bandage on it and Back out I went. I've got another scar which I can't show, uh, but it was also from when I was younger and I was camping. But it's the inside of my right thigh, close to my, well, I, I think it could be medically considered the groin, but anyway, it's really high up there. They're probably about the size of my fingers, to be honest, right? But there's three scars <laughs> on the inside of my thigh, and that's from a BMX bike where. I don't know if it's a thing anymore, but like the metal bike pedals that were spiky, I wiped out on a bike and that pedal just scraped the inside of my leg when I was going down a hill because I was trying to test a speedometer. 
<laughs> and uh, and that's the consequence of figuring that one out. I'm going to have another scar in the not terribly distant future, um, waiting for confirmation on the date, but at this point we're about three weeks away. I've always been calling it the Orky, but I believe that's what it's called, a bilateral orchiectomy, uh, and I believe by definition it's going to also be a scrotoectomy as well, I think. <laughs> so anyway, there's going to be some scars that, are, that didn't exist before. Not sure if I can say that's a cool story, and the reason for that, I may as well be transparent while I'm in the moment. Like, I've, I've continued, you know, propositioning it as, you know, I'm 41, I'm not having kids, you know, it's, it's very technical for me, and, and, and fundamentally it is. Right? When it's all said and done, it's it's fundamentally technical because there's no there's no value, right? They're not they're not doing me any good. So this is just a standard part of the process. It's just also frustrating at the same time because it's it's about as mandatory as an elective surgery can get, and a lot of that has to do because of, of the world around us, the society around us. And, you know, I try to say tongue in cheek, I don't need the extra baggage, and don't get me wrong, I don't want the extra baggage, pun fully intended. But it's, it's, it's also just part of the process of one less reason for a bigot to assault me just in case I don't happen to do any maintenance as effectively as I thought I did when it comes to going in public. I know I'm being a little dodgy with words there. I, I don't like talking about bits and pieces more than I have to unless I'm put into that position to, to talk about it. But I think you understand what I'm, what I'm talking about there. I'm trying to stay, you know, you know, positive mind about it. It's, it's just all the circumstances when you think of that, like, it would kind of almost be easier to go into the process if there was like a medical necessity and there just happened to be a positive byproduct out of it as well. Like I certainly don't want to wish cancer upon myself. That is not what I'm saying. And I'm not saying that it's easier for people who have testicular cancer. Those are not my words and please don't ever make them sound like that. They're my words. But what I'm saying is if there was a medical necessity to have to get done as in, you know, there, there's an injury in the area or, you know, I just mentioned if it was like testicular cancer or whatever, and then just part of the body byproduct would be like, oh good, I kind of wanted to tidy up the area anyway, so hooray. <laughs> um, it, it would be easier to go into the surgery with that. So that is going to be another, uh, another scar. The first surgery that I've ever, ever have had. So, you know, I don't know if we can call that a, a cool story or not. It's, it's just, it's a thing that's happening. It's part of, uh, you know, my life. I can't say I'm ambivalent. I've got, you know, my, my emotions are flippy on them and it's just because of what perspective I'm looking at it. I can look at everything as a very technical thing. I know that when it's all said and done, it's just part of part of my story. It's just that that one part in there where it's like it wouldn't be as much of a, uh, of a necessity if, you know, <laughs> if, if society wasn't so hung up on how smooth yoga pants look, I guess is probably the best way to put it. <laughs> What is your favorite piece of clothing? What about from the before times? And do you have any outfits that never cause any dysphoria? That's quite a mix. I'm very much a t-shirt and jeans type of person more often than not. I don't know if I have a favorite, but I certainly have like the, the, the circuit that gets into the laundry more often than not, I think is kind of a better way to put it because it also kind of depends on my mood. I know that if I'm going to be, you know, staying pretty relaxed, I'm very happy <laughs> just wearing, you know, uh, pretty much a throwaway t-shirt and some pajama pants and I can call that favorite. And then there's other times where if I'm going to be, you know, uh, in, in a conference call or, you know, planning on a public appearance or <laughs> doing an episode of Dwell on it or whatever, you know, I'll find something from there. So I don't know if I really have any favorites, but I'm I'm not fun like that either. Favorite is has always been a difficult word for me because I, I always try to like favorite what like what makes this the most favorite of everything because everything else has a reason why it's used or whatever sorry <laughs> um but let's put it this way if i'm wearing something i'm comfortable in it is that a better way to put it what about from the before times i definitely still have some clothes from a past life uh you know a lot of the stuff that i'll wear you know whether they're as pajamas or just lounging around stuff is you know stuff from a past life that i'd still consider comfy i still have some t-shirts and whatever too uh from a past life as well that you know are generally not really gender defined or anything like that or they just fit me well or whatever it would be so i've certainly still kept uh, a lot of those clothes, and for, for, for no other reason, it's like I bought them. <laughs> 
I bought them, they fit. I don't wear them as much and a lot of, for, for the reason for that is again, you know, just considering the world as it's been for the last two years, three years or whatever, a lot of my social presence has been very different than, you know, let's say the two or three years previous to that. So my wardrobe's probably a little more stacked than necessary right now, but it is what it is. And even with that, when it comes to from the last couple months going forward, as far as I could tell, I've never had COVID and I really don't want to roll the dice right now, especially when it comes to COVID or when it comes to any of the other any things that are going around right now. So I, I don't want to put myself into more public situations if not necessary, just because of this upcoming surgery. I don't want to find out that I caught COVID and I got hit pretty hard by it. You know, I've, I've got all my shots and everything like that anyway. I'm not concerned about that. It's I just don't feel like rolling the dice especially because of this surgery that's upcoming. I've got a lot more clothes than I probably need. And a lot of the clothes that I have too, like I said, are from a past life because then it just stretches out laundry day. <laughs> but I definitely have clothes from a past life. I've got um, a, a few hoodies that I absolutely still wear. I remember joking with, uh, you know, someone who was a friend of mine at the time as I was starting to you know, transition to full time, joking that, you know, do all of my old hoodies now count as boyfriend hoodies? <laughs> I say yes, <laughs> but um, why not keep those? They're super warm, they're super comfy, they fit really well. <laughs> if anything, they actually fit even more snuggy than before because I've lost a lot of weight since, you know, since a couple of years ago too, so there's just even more warmth in there too. So I'm a big fan of, of my hoodies from a past life. Do I have any outfits that never cause any dysphoria? I alluded to it a little while ago. If I'm wearing it, I'm comfortable. And as I also alluded to that I've got it, Honestly, a probably pretty oversized wardrobe, especially for how much I need, especially, you know, you know, with the work from home and the, and the limited socializing and so on and so on, especially when I went socially full time. I wanted to be sure that I would never find myself caught in a situation to force myself to get comfortable in some clothes. And so I've got backups to my backups when it comes to clothes that I would want to wear or to be sure to not run myself into a situation where I'm not gonna be able to have something to wear while I gotta catch up with laundry or anything like that. So I don't really have any outfits that cause dysphoria or anything like that. If there's anything that stands out to me though that I do get conscious about, I, I did mention a long time ago. Um, and you know what, I, if I can find the episode and if I can think about what the question was that relates to it, I'm going to put it right here. Here's going to be the awkward finger pointing to possibly nothing right now. But I remember talking about how I'm very self-conscious about my tummy and I still am, right? I've got, I've just got a very self-conscious thing about my tummy more than ever lately for no good reason really either. But I've always, always, always been self-conscious about my tummy. And if I'm wearing a shirt that just might be rising a little higher than I want on a day that I'm not feeling it, that can come out. Similarly, I'm very happy that I finally got my glasses back uh, a little while ago, but this frame I'm so much happier with than the glasses I was wearing in the interim while these were MIA. And again, it's not necessarily a dysphoria thing, but I find those glasses and that cat's eye frame to be so much more flattering than the rectangle style frame that my old glasses were. And even though they're feminine glasses, there's just something about the frame shape that like I said, I wasn't really feeling as well and so I didn't enjoy almost feeling like I had to wear those glasses. I was going through a lot of contacts during that time. I still have a bunch of disposable contacts that I'll wear once in a while and I can still, you know, work without glasses. Like I'm not wearing contacts, I'm not wearing glasses right now, but when I knew that I was gonna have to go through a day and if I needed some sort of you know, optical assistance, I think is how, what I'm trying to say. I would have rather wear my contacts than dipping into those rectangle frames again. And just again, not, not because of dysphoria, but I didn't feel they flattered my face as much as what these ones do. <laughs> um, but otherwise, I don't wear any clothes that 
that that induced dysphoria at all. I've never been put into a situation to find out about that. So I don't know if there are certain types that would cause those things. I don't get too affiliated to clothing and, and dysphoria at all like that. But again, there's lots of different clothes out there and I'm sure many would that I just happen to also automatically write off as I'm not wearing it because I just don't find it to be of my style or whatever anyway. How do gender stereotypes affect your gender identity? Are there any that you are happy or sad with? Um, funny, last question mentioning about clothes. I, I know myself that I consider myself to be, you know, when I dress myself, I'd like to say that I follow what we would consider a stereotypical woman's wardrobe. And I acknowledge that. And I've also found it really interesting just in the paradox of being trans, <laughs> which is, you know, going against the gender norm. However, finding comfort in following what is very much an induced gender industry in terms of clothing and fashion and so on. So believe me, I acknowledge the paradox. And I think about that often where it's like, this is kind of interesting, which always comes back to on a, on a tangent when, when it comes to like, why would you transition, Taylor? It's unhappy is what it is. Right? It has nothing to do about a desire to wear a certain type of clothes or anything else. It's like, I'm happy. My body and my head are finally, you know, working together. They're not fighting against each other. There's no, I wish I could, or I want to do or anything like that. It's happy. It's peace. And I just enjoy and prefer the gender stereotype <laughs> that is often, you know, marketed towards women and so on. So I don't know if that affects my gender identity, but it's where my gender identity gets attached to, I guess is probably a good way to put it. I don't let whatever's happening outside tell me how to be. I know that. It's just what I enjoy. If you call that as affecting gender identity, great. If you call it not, but being a byproduct of my gender identity, being a trans woman, then great. <laughs> I don't know. Are there any that I'm happy or sad with? I, I, I don't know. Because here I am being super fun at parties. I'm not enthusiastic or disinterested about many things like that. So long as people are allowed to be themselves without having a penalty about it is probably the way that I look at it. I'm not a fan of in 2022, this this constant pressure of, uh, it, I don't see it as much, but I think, I think, you know what, I'm gonna try implying here, but it's like, you know, boys blue, girls pink type of thing. I'm happy to see there's less of an emphasis on that, especially as we acknowledge non-binary individuals and every other, you know, gender diverse individual out there, whether it's agender or, or so on. So as long as there's less of that, you know, that, that that stereotype is what I would prefer to see. But if people enjoy things that would be considered more masculine or considered more feminine, have at her, like as long as those options stay available, I, I don't think there's a problem with that. But um, I don't really follow many other notions or stereotypes otherwise. And if I do, then I don't recognize it. I'm on autopilot. I'd love to know. And so with that, that if anyone happens to know any gender stereotypes that I follow, and especially if you've noticed me mention that from a past life or not, please share. Right? Let me know. Because like I said, otherwise I'm on autopilot. And if I'm on, on autopilot, then I'm not really happy or sad about either. They're just they're just elements of life. That was really thought provoking. <laughs> when people look at you are you afraid of them seeing something that might suggest you're trans <laughs> hashtag normalize the bulge um and i don't even know if afraid's the right word with that i just prefer to um not i wear big shoes so otherwise it, it's it's just a fact of life, right? Like, I'm not afraid of any characteristics about myself that might identify myself as a trans woman because I am proud of who I am. I, I, I'm not walking into the world with regret or fear or, or anything else like that. I, I know, as a matter of fact, that I've mentioned in a recent-ish episode, so we'll see if I can find it and I'll put it right here, of me knowing that trans. Like, I acknowledge that. I, I feel like I am recognized as visibly trans. So, um, no, not really. And, and like I said, if anything, it's just like the, the, and the only reason for that is bigoted people are violent, right? And it's not reducing at any 
<laughs> appreciable rate anytime soon. And the, the fixation that bigots have on, you know, people's personal parts is scary, right? Disgusting and so on. Like I said, it's not necessarily a fear, but it's like just something that I prefer to not have to deal with if I don't have to. <laughs> that was fun. Let's wrap this up. So if you enjoyed the content, please make sure to hit like. Please hit subscribe if you have not yet. I really would like to see myself start to approach 500. I know that just recently I ended up getting over 200 subscribers. From what I understand, 500 introduces a fun new feature that I can use on, on the YouTube platform at least. So I'm not losing sleep over it. I'm not hustling to get there. But if somehow magically 300 subscribers show up out of nowhere, I'm not going to argue that either. But otherwise, to help do that, please make sure to hit share. So like the content, subscribe if you haven't yet. Please make sure to hit share to give this uh, visibility to people who have not seen dwell on it or who'd like to know more about trans individuals and perhaps get educated or whatnot from my content as well. Remember I say this all the time that my reach is only as far as I can reach and that's where I need you the viewer the listener to help out and get other people aware of dwell on it and that can be done by you hitting the share button wherever it is it might be there depending on what platform you're checking this out on so please make sure to use that like share subscribe otherwise I think we can call this one a night here or a day I guess afternoon whatever <laughs> okay I I said earlier i've been up since 1 30 for the past couple days today is no exception with that but otherwise let's shut this one down here so thanks again for going on this journey with me i really hope you enjoyed this content please make sure to put questions of your own in the comments or send them to me by dm depending on whatever platform you're checking this out on so until the next episode please you have a great rest of your night have a great rest of your week as i always love to say 